I was looking for say easy to make multi vibrator circuits, uh, square wave oscillators and of course you can change a square wave into another type of wave. Uh, and I found on the uh, worldradiohistory.com website this uh, schematic. It's here. And my idea was that it was very interesting. Because they tell here this continuously variable etc uh, etc et and it is biased from a constant current source and this is the constant current source. Um, and they also told that you can take out here on this electrode a triangular wave. Well, uh, it is a kind of triangular wave but it is not uh, say a pure triangular wave. Anyway, uh, perhaps when I have time I will show uh, the waveform. The more interesting things are here. It could work, uh, like they tell here, between 5.6 Hz up to 2.68 MHz, megacycles, by using only seven different capacitance values for C going from 330 picofarad to 100 microfarad. Well, that was of course very interesting. And uh, this is by the way the source. It's a 1968 circuit and I made it in practice. And let's look at the circuit, how it works. And also about all the, say, experimental results. Um, this is the schematic. Again, nothing new. When you saw that earlier schematic here. Here is the constant current source. The potentiometer here, 500 ohms. And that's here, 500 ohms. Uh, say sets the constant current, that's my ID, uh, and I have changed the circuit a little bit. I've used BC547 transistors, classical NPN silicon transistors, and I've searched for both transistors here an amplification factor of 300, both of them. Uh, that uh, is only an ID. My ID is that when they um, amplify exactly the same. Perhaps I could get a bit of waveform. And here is the critical capacitor that does the job in combination, of course, with the uh, constant current source to give out all kinds of frequencies. And I have to say, it works very, very nice. So it's a kind of poor man's square wave oscillator. Uh, it does not give a good triangle wave. Perhaps it has to do with the transistors that I've used now uh, compared to the transistors that were used in 1968. That's a quite a long time ago, but anyway, this is, this is, say, the kind of circuit that, as far as I know, always works. It was made in a proper way. And here is it on the breadboard, kind of breadboard, of course, not a, a say modern breadboard, but anyway. And here is the potentiometer here, 500 ohms, that does the job of changing the frequency a little bit. And here is the switch. And here is the frequency dependent capacitor. At the moment, it works on one. 0.35 uh, kilohertz. Waveform is beautiful, by the way. Let's listen. And also on other frequencies, the waveform is beautiful. 
Um, the schematic for a while and I will give more information about the how the circuit works. Um, I have to take my experimental results and they are here. So here are the experimental results. Anyway, uh, at first uh, they told that it could work on very low frequencies and that is absolutely true. I've used for CX, that is this capacitor here, and that is to say uh, this capacitor, the time dependent capacitor in the circuit. I've used here different values uh, going from 10 microfarad up to uh, a capacitor in the picofarad range. And I also tested electrolytics and non-polar capacitors of higher value, say a 3 microfarad non-polar and 3 microfarad electrolytic. And uh, it directly shows that with electrolytic capacitors you have other results, in one or another way. Anyway, so um, let's pen over the experimental results somewhat. 10 microfarad electrolytic, 60 hertz up to 75 hertz. Uh, but, well, we'll pan over a little bit slowly to give, say, a better insight. What happens when you connect uh, electrolytic capacitors here in this circuit or non-polar capacitors of the same value? So, for instance, here an electrolytic capacitor of 2.2 microfarad gives this range and a non-polar capacitor of 2.2 microfarad gets to another range, other frequency range. Um, in all cases, and that's very important, the waveform is very pure. And let me show it here on this frequency, say, when you go to lower frequencies in the order of 200 hertz and so, and also to higher frequencies, up to say 1 megahertz, the waveform stays very pure. So, uh, what they told in that 1968 circuit, it is true. I pen over slowly about the results and of course there is a limited variation here here when you turn that potentiometer and that is this potentiometer in the uh, circuit it's the constant current source anyway um, let me show it I turn now the potentiometer somewhat well, suddenly I see, I think I made her, I've lost the connection, but anyway, uh, the circuit works nice. Let me tell you that. Uh, here again, the results of experiments. And I also tried to get to the highest frequency possible. Uh, that's of course logical because they tell that it could work say up to approximately uh, 2 megahertz and that is true. Sorry for all the movements. Again, page two of my experiments, cap value, and of course when you go to higher frequencies, uh, only non-polar capacitors are used. 1.6 kilocycles to 1.9 kilocycles, and what you also see here is that the variation in the frequency is not very big, and that is a good sign. 
so you have to search for itself which capacitor to be used and in which frequency band you want to use this oscillator. 1 and 5, that is 1500 picofarad, we are in this range. Uh, 1 nanofarad, that is 1000 picofarad, we go to this range. 470 up to 486 kilo cycles and the waveform gets on the higher frequencies somewhat around it. Anyway, um, in a certain way logical and perhaps when you use other transistors, not say the simple BC547B but high frequency transistors, perhaps you can get to uh, can get to somewhat sharper waveforms. Ceramic capacitor 1 nanofarad gives somewhat rounded waveform in this frequency band. And well, here we are on the highest frequency that the circuit can give. It's 3.4 megacycles. Uh, and well, on the very high frequency, say in the order of uh, 3 mega cycles, uh, the waveform gets uh, is of course no longer a square wave, but perhaps a waveform like this or that. Maximum frequency where it can give a useful waveform, a be it a kind of sine wave, is uh, 2 megahertz. And it fits to the uh, to what was taught what was taught in the 1968 book, etc., etc. So thanks for watching. Uh, Something happened when I was doing this demo, but anyway, you can be sure that this circuit works properly. And again, thanks for watching, and the schematic again.